All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And uh, I just, uh, let me just correct myself. The attack indeed happened on Sunday and not on Monday along the Kaduna Abuja Highway. And we have joining us uh, Emmanuel Yawi, National Publicity Secretary of the ACF. Good morning to you, Mr. Yawi. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, uh, we uh, read off from the papers this morning and the ACF is actually describing that particular incident that happened on Sunday as a national shame. This is not the first time that we have seen such attacks on the Abuja uh, Kaduna Highway. What exactly has the federal government refused to see and uh, what direction should we be pointing them to? You say what? The federal government has done what? What have they failed? What have they failed to see? In as much as this is not the first time that uh, that particular road has been uh, prone to attacks, so what should we be doing proactively? Uh, they should be gathering information, uh, like uh, where the former director of SCBA was killed. Uh, they have been that particular spot. There have been many attacks there. People have been kidnapped there. People have been killed there. And we wonder why the government and has is spending so much on security, cannot surveil a particular spot and stop this criminal from taking place at that very particular spot. So we think they are not uh, doing their job seriously. If they are doing, they have helicopters, they have aircraft, they have police on the road, they have the SSX, they have everything that it takes to survive, uh, to survive this place and uh, catch these uh, petty criminals who are making life so difficult for everybody. That is what we feel. The, the federal and the state government, there should be coordination between the federal Karuna and the Niger state government who cover this. That rule belongs to the federal government, but it covers, it starts from Karuna City. It goes through Niger City and it ends up in the federal capital territory. It's a very strategic road. It links states like Kano, Sokoto, all the states in the Northwest. Most of them come through that road. So that you allow your citizens to be kidnapped, terrorized on such a strategic road. I don't know how else to describe it, if not a national share to the whole country. It's a shame. And it has been going on for a long time, and uh, we all look helpless in the eyes. These people even now have guns to, 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 to attempt to attack the rail line, which is the alternative route some of our state when we are going to Kaduna. They bombed the rail line. So very soon, even traveling by rail will not be seen to Kaduna. That's the change we are facing. Okay, so uh, I'd like to find out what happened to the tactical team that was deployed by the former IGP of police, Ibrahim Idris, at the time, in collaboration with the Special Forces, which was actually postulated as a permanent solution on that particular road. Yeah, the permanent solution is what you see today, continued killings, continued kidnappings, continued harassment of innocent citizens who are pursuing their legitimate uh, aspirations. That is not a permanent solution. The criminal activities have continued on that road unabated. There is no solution. There's, they have not found a solution to it. And we are tasking the government. That is why if, if there is a government, and the government cannot protect life or property, that government has no business of being in existence. All these promises, 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 and the situation gets worse. I used to drive on that road, sometimes at night, sometimes I would leave Abuja 10, <laughs> me alone in my car, I would drive, I have nothing to have. But look at what is happening. In broad daylight, people are being kidnapped. Sometimes security men themselves, why did the former chief of army staff die? He had to take a flight.
from Kaduna to Abuja is not a long distance. If he had traveled by maybe probably he would have been alive. So he had to take a flight, and the flight uh, crashed and he died. So why the not distance from Abuja to Kaduna? But my question no, is, well, why, why don't we have, you know, security personnel manning these roads? Because, uh, you know, four years ago, or uh, it was a main saying, we're going to deploy. There was a team of 500 men that were deployed to that road, like I mentioned, in collaboration with the special forces. So like you have mentioned, you have been plying the road. Do you still see men of, uh, you know, the tactical team or the special forces on that road? I mean, on air and, you know, on land. They are there, but we wonder what they are doing. Whether they, they are doing their job properly, sometimes you see them relaxing on the mango trees and all that. They are there. The security men are there. But how can they be there when at the same spot that this director was killed? That is the killing spot. What are they doing? What kind of surveillance are they carrying? They are there on the road, but at the same spot. Either people are killed there, or people are dropping into the bush, into the forest. Some are detained for months. Some, are, if you're lucky, you have money to pay, or your relatives have money to pay. They, 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 have, they release you. There, some people even suspect that they work hand in hand with these terrorists. That is a suspicion. But they are there. <laughs> Okay, let me let me let me let me, uh, let me ask this question from another direction. You just uh, referred to them as um, terrorists, uh, and indeed you said that there, there was a time, indeed uh, historically, when you would actually drive yourself by yourself, uh, you know, along the Abuja Kaduna Road. But just how did we get to the extent where you know we cannot even think of driving without uh, you know? also thinking of um, being kidnapped. That's on the one hand. And again, would, do you think if the federal government had actually tempted those bandits, uh, those kidnappers, as it were, you know, terrorists, that there would have been a different approach to tackling this issue? I don't know. I'm not in government, so I cannot speak on behalf of government. But as far as I'm concerned, what these people are doing is terrorism. How the government classifies them in the government business. As far as I'm concerned, what those so some of our members have been kidnapped and harassed and treated, maltreated. And when they relate to us, the ACF, what they went through, there's no other way of classifying this but as an act of terrorism. The government is free, maybe they are hampered by international law or whatever laws to call these people terrorists, but as far as I'm concerned, these people are terrorists. The historical aspect we are wondering to is terrible, and sometimes when this road was a very safe road, I don't know what has gone wrong, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. Things have changed. In broad daylight, people are being killed. People are being kidnapped. What's going wrong? We never knew about kidnapping in the north. We used to read about it in the newspapers. Maybe in the Arab world, or when they went to Nigeria, it was mostly a southern affair in the east. Now the north has become the headquarters of kidnapping around something. What has gone wrong? We cannot see. But the ACF is very, very sad and very, very concerned. I would have made opposition to the government that we did not elect this government to hand over our country to terror. There's no doubt about it. We did not elect this government into power to come and hand our, our beautiful country to terror. This situation is unacceptable. It's a national shame. So, as it is right now, as individuals uh, who apply that particular road, uh, that's the Kaduna Abuja way, would you advise that for the meantime, I don't know if that's possible, that they uh, should actually stay off that road uh, knowing that um, nothing is being done or has been done to checkmate them all of those um, attacks that happen around that particular route? 
write down is not very simple. I would, I would advise somebody I like who I love to travel on that road this way. So, uh, people who plan to travel on that road should be careful. They either take their own personal security measures or whatever. Uh, you, you hear about these things, you think it will not happen to you. You can just run into those guys and they will mess up your whole life. They have two women. A lady professor from the northern part of this country was it on that road. You know how many professors we have in the north? You can count them. And ladies, a lady professor from the north was killed on that road. That was how sad it is. People are, like, are being wasted for nothing. And when you see these boys who do the terrorism, you wonder what happens to all the millions they get. There was a time we had a meeting with Miyeti Allah in Kaduna, and they told us they themselves are fed up, that they are being used. There are some big shots who are organizing these acts of terrorism. And all the hundreds of millions we hear are paid as ransom. Do not get to these boys on the streets. These headsmen, some of them, some of them, some of them, those big shots collect those hundreds of millions and take off. They go and buy arms and they supply these boys. Because boys do not go to school, they do not have any skills. So they are available to be used and misused by these big shots. So it's a very big problem. So the government has to step in too seriously that he's taking it now. That's our problem. All right. So you have mentioned uh, some of this. You're saying that uh, the reason is that you have uh, persons who are sponsoring uh, this bandit, and you call them big shots. Uh, so we know this big shot. Why haven't these big shots been arrested? I mean, why haven't we have people being arrested, being prosecuted, being made to face the law? Why are people not in the bars? Only the government can, 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 can answer that question. When were these uh, repentant or so called repentant Boko Haram people started running to government? that they have repented, they should be accepted and rehabilitated. Our chairman, Chief Aoudoube, issued a very strong statement. He said, these are kidnappers, these are killers. Why do you just accept them as repentant? Take them to the courts, try them. If the courts find out that they are not guilty, then you free them. But just because somebody who has been killing God, God, he comes and confesses he has become repentant. You are sent and rehabilitated. And the families of those people he destroyed their lives are watching. What sort of society are we creating? We criticized the government for accepting these people back. And I'm sure some of these people are accepted by because of the influence of their sponsors. So the government has to be more serious. Why rehabilitate people whom you are not sure of their antecedents? They have already started routing in the camps where they are being kept in Bono. Old habits die very, very hard. They have said routing in government uh, rehabilitation center. Those old Boko Haram people were accepted as reformed book matter. They have already started out over the killing of cows. Cows are being killed for them every but they say they slaughtered by people. They have not been done by people of the All right, Mr. Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh, um, Mr. Yahweh, on the final note, just as we wrap up, I just want to get uh, one thing clear from what you said concerning this top shot. If I can infer from what you said, uh, are you saying that uh, this attack that happened uh, along that particular corridor might just be politically motivated? It may be. It may be, you cannot know until they are properly investigated. 
And that is what this government is failing to do, to investigate the incidences of kidnap by killings and harassment properly. They should be prosecuted. Like this guy, former director of now he has gone into politics. Maybe his political is after him. Nobody knows. But until the government and the security agencies carry out thorough investigation, we may never know. All right, thank you so much. I'm Emmanuel Yahweh, National Publicity Secretary of the Arawa Consultative Forum. We do appreciate your time. And as we uh, look forward to seeing uh, more sharing news concerning uh, this issue of um, kidnapping and uh, attacks along the Kaduna Abuja Expresso, which has become so worrisome over the years. We do appreciate your time on the show this morning. Thank you very much. Well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. We do appreciate uh, and we hope that you enjoyed all of the conversation. Now, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And of course, on YouTube is at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Do have a great morning. And I'm Justin. I'm going to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.